Hello and welcome to SME Hub. My name is Omobolanli Adeshui. And with me right here is Mr. Tululokwe Omoni. He is CEO Bubbles Clothing. Thank you so much for joining us on the show. Thank you, Bolanli. So let's start with your journey into the world of men's fashion. Can you tell us the story? Um, before I start, um, I'm a little bit uh, shocked about your percentage, about the percentage the statistics. Allo allotted to Africa. But I mean, the statistics, so let's continue from there. Mm. Um, how did I start? Um, here and there, um, clothing was not my major business. Um, I started from the banking industry. Uh, wow. After school. Um, like I would say, like I worked for three different banks and um, resigned voluntarily to venture into business. When I resigned from the bank, I did not um, venture into clothing business. I ventured into, that was the advent of um, GSM telecommunication in Nigeria. Uh, so I was a dealer. That's over 10 years ago. Oh, so I left the bank um, over 17 years ago. <laughs> Interesting. So, well, you know, I look young. I'm young, I actually, forget the white hair. Well, so, uh, well uh, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> That's quite disputable. Um, so, um, at the advent of GSM, well, do you know about just um, tenure as the president? I mean, I think we're just like six months, eight months or a year into um, GSM advent in Nigeria. I was a dealer. I was, MTN, I was an MTN dealer, MTN Econet then, and um, Nitel, uh, later Global Company came to join. Um, that was what I was doing basically. And um, from there, I ventured into importation of mobile phones. Okay. Um, and um, I started that. So along the line that um, I just started bringing in few stuff to my friends. Uh, because of the kind of nature of business I was doing, then I was traveling frequently. So I was always having requests from my ex-colleagues on them. I need two suits, I need three suits, I need one suit and all that. So I was just bringing it for them. And I was doing it casually. Did that have anything to do with the fact that you had a banking Obviously, background. Obviously, obviously, because um, it was my colleagues that I was bringing the suits in for, mm -hmm. and uh, maybe a few of my friends that uh, know that I travel frequently, maybe like once a month and all that. So I was just doing that by the side. I was just, I was just doing it casually, you know. Um, this person requested for this and that. Um, but I found out that I was. Um, so later, I started expanding that uh, scope, and even though I was operating from my house. I was not really using my office, my telecoms office for clothing mm -hmm. business. I was operating my house and I started having um, fresh um, customers coming to the house to, to request for stuffs and to buy stocks. Mm -hmm. So I can remember one of them just told me that, you know what, I think uh, you actually do very well in this business, the way you attend to people and all that. I mean that you don't do badly in this business, I think you should think of expanding it. Mm -hmm. So we opened the first shop. and. Um, that's where the story started from. The first shop was a small place in Okwebi Road, back of the building, Okwebi Road. And um, all I can remember is that after opening the first um, outlet, um, for the first one month after I opened the first outlet, which was a small store, I I could count how many times I went to my off island office, I mean my telecoms office. And I later found that I was more interested in the clothing business, that the telecoms business was just more of business for me, make money, make profit, and um, pay my bills. But for the clothing business, uh, I found that it goes beyond pay my bills, that I was actually interested in that business. Mm. So that's where I, I focused more on the clothing business, and uh, that's how Bobo's Clothing started. So, looking at the fact that you've been doing this for over 10 years now, what are some of the challenges you encountered along the way? Bubbles Clothing is over 16 years now. Mm. Um, obviously, the normal business challenges and the normal terrains that we have in Nigeria, um, Forex, uh, um, a million naira used to be um, $7,000 plus mm. when I started this, started this business. Um, a million naira now is not up to $2,000. Mm. Um, we have other challenges. Obviously, uh, power and um, and all that. You know, initially, when you play, when you are playing, um, when you, when you, when you start a business small, you find that um, the major challenges that every other person mentions, um, practically, objectively, you feel that maybe it's overblown. Ah, why are people talking about power, 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 power? They are not manufacturing. Why are they shouting about power, power, power? But by the time you start opening up outlets and all that, you find that um, 
the likes of power and other stuff take a chunk of your of your of your profit mm. of, or, or forms a chunk Impute. of your of your of your expenses mm. your overheads and um, you also have government um, different government regulatory bodies to deal with and all that but vis-a-vis -vis, um, i found that challenges in business are generally common to one business or the other mm. uh, although there are some that are peculiar peculiar to to some kind of business, business. yeah but the uh, kind of business that we do is basically like retail business and then uh, um, the retail business has peculiarities in terms of challenges and mm. all that. So, can you tell us some of the mistakes you made, you know, while you were starting, you know, so that th those watching who may be thinking of going into this kind of business can avoid those mistakes too? Um, you, you, you make different mistakes generally in business, but clothing wasn't my first business. That doesn't mean that I've been perfect all the way doing the clothing business. Uh, when we started Bobo's Clothing, we we had um, the capacity, so to say, to start bigger. Yeah, I can remember when we started uh, because um, the capital by that we deal with in telecoms business is quite huge. Okay. So we had the capacity to start bigger than the way we started. Mm. What, what? How much did you spend in terms of capital? In yeah, yeah, I can't, I can't, I can't in specific have the figure that I spent in terms of capital. Yeah, an estimate. I will not even give it to you. <laughs> um, <laughs> Why? <laughs> so you know, uh, we want people to learn. Yeah, but I'm going. I'm, I'm going to explain the the, the process. The process. Okay. To them, I mean, they can learn with the process. All right. They don't need to know if it's one couple or one billion. All right. That's fine. <laughs> so um, the the the, cap the the capacity that by which we started was small. I mean, we started with the smaller um, uh, with the small outlet, and I can remember one of my friends that we do telecoms together. Um, told me that but i mean you could you could start bigger and all that i said you know what we we have lessons that we learned in the telecoms industry and then one of the lessons that i learned from the telecoms industry is that you start small and you go the business let it be organic mm. why then, yeah you see when it's for instance now when you start a business now maybe for instance now um i i have someone that wants to start this business now and then um, the person has access to capital and you tell the person you know start with x millions of naira that can you start with and I said yes and um, he does not really have tutelage and all that and uh, he just goes okay he gets to know that maybe I bring my stuff from X country and he goes there and he just starts to other stuff and comes to Nigeria and comes to start the business he may not succeed because even when we buy we buy based on experience mm. there are some nice stuff that we say this is very nice but we will not buy a lot of it because we know that he does not really have a lot of money um, there are some Can you explain that further? For instance, I may I may see a nice um, style of suit, maybe a do double-breasted suit. Uh, this is nice, uh, good quality, good pricing and all that. This will sell and this will give us some profit and all that. We may not buy a lot of it because uh, we, may, we, we may know that uh, even though double-breasted suits are nice, uh, they look good on people, but people do not really embrace it that much. It's just a few that have embraced it then that are still wearing it now. Maybe mm. just a few additions to so it. So it means you must understand the trend. Yes, you must understand the trend. It's not as difficult in the men's clothing than the women's clothing. The women's clothing is more difficult. <laughs> Complicated, more you difficult. mean? The trends change <laughs> per second. So, um, so, I mean, sincerely for us, for men, it's even better. You know, the trends change, but the changes um, for instance, people were wearing slim ties at the point in time, some people never wore it. I knew it was going to fade out. That's faded out. Mm. But what just happened is that, I mean, people don't wear the kind of bogus, bogus ties they used to wear before. There's not True. in between. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? You know that some things are going to fade out, then some things will How fade out. How do you know? How do you tell? Uh, you, you read people, you read fashion, you read people that are um, 